guys and welcome at MKITS Online. It's so great to be with you guys today. Turn up the volume of your TV, get yourself loose and let's praise and worship together. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior in my soul. I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior, I've got love for my Savior in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got peace like a river, I've got love for my Savior in my soul. I bet you think Jesus is pretty perfect, and yeah, I did too. But today I want to invite you to meet him again, perhaps in a new way that you haven't thought of before. Don't worry, by the end of it you won't have changed your mind about him being perfect. You will see him in an interesting side of the God we serve and you'll definitely become more aware of how he sees you. So, imagine Jesus standing here in front of you. He starts telling you a bit of his story, where he came from. He starts. I have quite a complicated family. My mother, Mary, was pregnant with me before she was married. In my time, it was quite a scandal on its own. But there's more to my earthly story. Some of my great-grandparents had some pretty shady backgrounds too. There was the prostitute great-grandmother called Rahab, the trickster grandmother called Tamar, the one who didn't exactly know her place when she subtly pursued my great-grandfather, Ruth, and the great-grandfather and mother called Bathsheba, who had the affair which also made my grandfather David a murderer. I told you, my family is complicated. You sit back and consider the imperfect people in Jesus' family line for a moment. Broken people, situations that aren't ideal. But guess what? Jesus chose this. Ultimately God, yet voluntarily man, stepping down from heaven into a broken situation. Jesus, who always was, who is God, choosing to be conceived by a young girl that was not married yet, by the time she became pregnant. Have you met and thought of Jesus in this way? I'd love to get to know this God, who chooses to use people in their sticky, complicated and broken situations to be part of something amazing. Because this God and then use me too, even with my issues and insecurities. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Hi guys, I'm New Year at MKITS. My name is Lenise, and I am super excited to be here with you guys. So what an amazing story, right? 
Meeting Jesus in this way is amazing. And this scripture helps us to understand even more of who he is. So Jesus didn't only start existing when he was born he, on earth. He was with God and he was God. Jesus is God. He is transcendental, something else, mysterious and supernatural. He is above everything else. He is beyond ordinary limits, exceeding superior and supreme. And yet, He chooses not to hold on to being God, but He chooses to become human with limitations and the shortfalls of being human. And the story He chooses is far from perfect. This story is very real and filled with mistakes, uncertainty and brokenness. And in the context that Jesus was born into honor and shame was a very big thing. A scandal that could ruin your whole reputation and even your livelihood. And yet Mary becomes pregnant without being married. This was the worst case scenario for her reputation. If Joseph hadn't married her anyway, despite how it looked, she would probably have been chased away and left with very little to provide for her and her baby. It was very unlikely that anyone else would marry her because of the scandal. Seems like a pretty big risk, right? Yep. So why not just be born to a king and queen who was settled and sorted? Or why not choose a more comfortable or predictable story to slot into? Why an unmarried young girl? Perhaps it's because when the word Jesus chose, to make his home among us, he wasn't interested in being comfortable or safe. He was interested in being with us in our most difficult, uncertain and broken moments. Perhaps by choosing this story, he helps us to understand how he leads by example and by serving in humility. And not by separating himself from the difficult situations and times. And perhaps by choosing this story, he reminds us of how He sees us. He looks past our flaws, sins, and our shortcomings because He forgives and empowers us. We are useful in His amazing plan because we are tools in His hands. When He looks at us, He doesn't see mistake, sin, or even brokenness, but He sees loved, gifted, and even healed. It's never too late to be part of Jesus' story. So let's meet Jesus in the, in the unexpected story of his life. So we'll meet him born into chaos and uncertainty. Change your view of power and status. He changes how and what we think is important in life. If you take a second glance, you'll see that Jesus changes the whole idea of power and status. Perfect as he definitely is, He's willing to step in our imperfectness and love us anyway. He loves you with all your insecurities and imperfections and even your shame and disappointment. And He wants to do life with you. Hi guys, let's close our eyes for a quick prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for always being with us. We thank you for meeting us in all aspects of life. Thank you for being there for us in the, the hard times, the difficult times, but also there in the fun times. We, we adore you, Lord. We, we, we honor you and we praise you. And we, we'd like to just extend um, our gratitude for, for your presence in our lives. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Amen. Bye, guys.